Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Ramadan 2021 wake up call. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. This Ramadan, no hearing of the sweet humming of the worshippers in the masjid making dhikr and reading the Quran like a sweet beehive in the house of Allah. We're not going to hear it. And probably we're not even going to have the warm hugs and the takbir of Eid this year as we normally congratulate each other every year. But what has really changed, my brothers and sisters? I want to tell you that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a sickness or a hardship or a trial upon people, it doesn't last very long. This pandemic is going to be lifted. This trial will be lifted, brothers and sisters, and then another one will come. However, I ask the question again, what or who has really changed? Listen to what Allah said in the Quran. Allah tells us categorically and clearly. Verily, Allah does not change a people's condition unless they change their inner selves. What is this inner self that we are talking about, brothers and sisters? And what is this condition which Allah changes? Allah does not start us off with a bad condition. Allah is merciful and kind. He is generous. He puts us into the condition of security, safety, provision. We breathe, we smile, we go into the hands of family. He gives us health. He gives us provision, brothers and sisters. He put Adam alayhi salam in paradise. He didn't put him on earth first. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah does not take away the blessing from a people. Allah gives it. He is al Karim. But only when we change that within ourselves, what is within ourselves? Allah created us with something called fitrah, whether you are Muslim or non-Muslim, born of Muslim parents or non-Muslim parents. Isn't every child the same? Even, even, isn't every baby the born with the same innocence? Don't they cry when they see their parents fight? Muslim or non-Muslim parents? Doesn't a child cry when they see people screaming? This is an instinct that Allah has given us. Allah puts us in a beautiful instinctive behavior in the, harm, the harmony with the world, with the rest of the world. But when we change our natural good state and we start to follow our bad desires and create, create and justify falsehood because of our own desires and become selfish and move away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somewhat, that's when Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for us to learn from what we have done. It is not Allah who changes your state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take you back to your blessed state until you, until you and I change the state that is within ourselves. Allah does not let haram, oppression, cheating and lying to continue in a world which he has created that is full of truth and harmony. It doesn't work like that. We have to change, my brothers and sisters. And Allah continues to remind us, and this is why He has put us through this ibtila. The word ibtila in English means trial, test, exam. But in Arabic, ibtila means to change your state from a condition to another condition and flip flop between them. Why? So that you can look at yourselves and reflect because we react when things change. We are afraid when things change, but then we learn resilience. We learn how to stand up. A child, remember when you learned how to walk? You can't remember that because you were a baby, but you didn't fall a hundred times, my dear brother and sister. You actually learned a hundred ways of how to stand up. And this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah says. This happened because Allah is not one to change the favor. This happened because Allah is not one to change the favor which he has bestowed upon a people until they have changed their attitudes. Surely Allah is all hearing, all knowing, subhanAllah. Even after all of this, Allah is waiting for us. He is hearing us. 
He's listening to what we're going to say. He wants us to call upon him in return. And Allah knows who is suffering and who is not. Allah knows who is sincere and who is not. He is all knowing. My brothers and sisters, the hearts have hardened. The hearts have hardened, brothers and sisters. And they have not hardened because they have not hardened except because the majority, and listen carefully to what I'm about to say, because the majority of individuals in the world have changed. They have moved off, strayed away from the remembrance of Allah. What is the remembrance of Allah? The only truth that still speaks the truth today while we live in the world of falsehood is the Quran. We have moved from the Quran, brothers and sisters. And why do I say individually? Because a person might say, well, this pandemic, if other people are oppressing, if the leaders are oppressing, if other people's around, people around the world have abandoned their prayers, I haven't. If people abandon their families, I haven't. If other people, the leaders of the world have done this or that to people, I haven't. What's it got to do with me? Why am I suffering? The answer, my brothers and sisters, is Allah will not put an ibtila, a trial upon a whole community or a whole nation, even the whole world, until individuals, majority of individuals, have gone off something that was right before. Brothers and sisters, before I go into that, the Quran, which is the only reading and recital left, which speaks the truth. Subhanallah, when you listen, listen to the Quran, read the Quran. When you watch on YouTube, for example, a beautiful reciter reciting and you look at the words underneath, it temporarily takes you away from the false world into a world of truth. Wallahi al-Azim. Subhanallah, we can't help but feel that we are living in a world of false hypocrisy, lies, manipulation, two-faced. I'm even talking about individuals within the families, you and me, two-faced people, oppression in families with spouses, with their children, with their parents, with their relatives, with their trade, oppression, even in the mosques. We oppress one another, not everybody, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings a trial in accordance with the level of how far we've reached. This is a small reminder, brothers and sisters, a little tap to bring us back. Superficial goals. What are our goals? Superficial. Are they really that important that will save us in the hereafter? Materialistic rat race, abuse, abandoning of salat, zakat, hijab, true dua, sincerity, remembrance of Allah, and the list goes on, brothers and sisters. When I say that the majority of individuals of the world have moved away, I mean that each and every one of us has an accountability this time. We cannot pass the buck on someone else. So Allah has isolated us. Let's take one example. Perhaps it's this, perhaps it's this example. Social media accounts, isn't it in the hands of every single person these days almost? The young and the old, the good and the bad, everybody. And every individual has freedom to share, to post, to watch, to say anything they desire on social media and they share it. And what do we see majority of? Honestly, brothers and sisters, what do we see majority of on social media? Things that we have shared, things that we read, things that we give. What images, what interests does your mind and my mind occupy night and day when we look at social media? Have you realized how indecent, immoral and immodest behaviors, language, images and ideologies have become normalized, normalized and accepted as if it is second nature when wallahi it is a sick disorder. But the worst thing is to see Muslims, Muslims, people of the Quran changing the meaning of their own deen, trying to justify their wrong acts while they know they are doing wrong. Allahu Akbar. But when the death comes to us, we wish that we can come back for one more minute to change everything. Brothers and sisters, who has really changed? Who has really changed? But this is not a punishment. This pandemic, this economic disaster, this social disorder that we are in, my brothers and sisters in Islam, I, this is not a punishment. We were in social disorder. Now it's a reset. This is not an anger from Allah. This is not a wrath from Allah. This is a wake up call. This is a wake up call, an opportunity to return. Brothers and sisters, Allah said, Fasad. Corruption. Facade means when things are no longer in the correct order. We move off it. We corrupt. In land and in sea, it has exceeded all bounds and taken over and ruled people's minds and hearts until they follow corruption instead of truth and goodness. 
in order for Allah to let them feel and taste a bit of what they have done with their own hands, what we have done with our own hands. Why does Allah do that? Allah answers it in the hope perhaps they will return. Perhaps they will stop what they're doing. Perhaps they will reflect and come back. That's why Allah subhanahu wa puts us through these trials. Allah said, and we have already sent messengers to nations before you. Then we seize them with poverty, hardship and sicknesses in the hope perhaps they might humble themselves to us. They might humble themselves to us. The hearts are hardened, brothers and sisters. The hearts are hardened and they need to be softened again for the sake of Allah. They need to be softened to the religious reminders. People get irritated before Ramadan, before this time. We used to get irritated when people remind us of something religious. We block them. We don't want to hear them. We need to soften our hearts to our brothers and sisters, to our family, to our kin and kith, to our parents. We need to soften our hearts towards our spouses. We need to take it easy on them. We need to soften our hearts to the truth when it comes to us. We need to soften our hearts towards the Quran and Salah. We need to soften our hearts against arrogance and pride. We need to return to the Quran and repentance, brothers and sisters. This virus uh, thing that we've been going through has been a wake-up call for everyone around the world, whether rich, poor, whatever the case is. Otherwise, it's for us to reflect on how we've been living lives. Don't look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor is a sinner. No, look at yourself and say, what have I done? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing right? Should I be doing this? Should I be not? It's really something personal, but at the end of the day, despite whatever we're going through, whatever we're experiencing, whatever downfalls, however this pandemic has affected us, God will still lift these troubles away from us. They, it, uh, the virus is not here to stay, is what I can say. Short, otherwise, let me know what you guys actually think about this and the message that it had. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.